Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 20 of the Lead Code Daily Challenge. Uh, let's get started. Uh, permutation sequence. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join the Discord to hang out, ask questions, whatever. And let's get going. The set 1 to n contains a total of n uh, factorial unique per permutations. By listing the label of it, you get the following sequence for n equals 3. Given n and k, return the k permutation sequence. Okay. So this is actually a really good problem to kind of get the basis of uh, a technique. Uh, and usually the, the pro these type of problems will ask you, uh, given some, some way to generate a sequence uh, or an ordering of the sequence, how do you get the kth uh, ordering of that sequence or something like that, right? The kth permutation in this case. Um, and in this case, uh, so the idea behind these kind of problems is that um, you just do it one digit at a time. Uh, so basically, the let's say in this case, and this is easier because it's permutation, so it it uh, the, it's easier to understand to do the counting. But for example, in this case, uh, we have you know one to n. Let's just say one to five as for, as an example, and then you have some number. Let's just say. Uh, well, 5 factorial is what, uh, like 120 or something like that. So, uh, hmm, hmm. Um, so we can't be that much, but all right, let's just add another number or something like that, right? And then the you have a random k, you say, and then the idea is that, okay, uh, you do a count of how many numbers begin in each digit, right? And the, and let's say the first digit is one. What does that mean, right? Well, that means that there are seven digits left uh, to kind of permutate. Uh, and how many ways are there to count that? Well, there's just seven factorial, right? Uh, so that means that, okay, let's, I'm just pulling up a calculator right now. Seven factorial is 5,000. Okay, so that's a maybe bad example. But let's say this is 10,000, then. Uh, then the first number is four, 50, four, uh, 5,040. And that means that the 5,000 sequences where 1 is the first digit, right? So let's actually change this to like, oops, 12,000. And then now you do the same thing where uh, the first digit is 2. Well, that also has 7 factorial in this case because, like I said, that's what makes this a little bit easy is that these things don't change. Uh, so it's another 50, 40. Um, and then now you take 1,200, uh, 12,000 minus you know 10080 is equal to what uh 1920 or something like that uh maybe i should double check the calculator but uh but then now you three you do the same thing and seven factorial and it's 5040 again and you're like okay well 1920 it's it's less than 5040 so that means that the first digit is a three and then now we look at um we we now that we know the first digit is a three then you could kind of think of it as a sub problem when you want to call it that or you sent you the same problem right which is that okay now you have seven three digits and you're trying to get the 19 20th uh k right so then now you do the same thing where okay is the first digit a one uh, well, if it's a 1, then you have 6 factorial for the rest of the digits. And 6 factorial, of course, is me pulling up a calculator, is 720. And then you do the same thing, and then so forth. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind it. Uh, and then technically it's 3, but then you skip the 3, and we'll talk about how to do an implementation. But, um, but you know, so that's another 720, and so forth, and then dot, dot, dot. And then let's say, I think the... the second digit should be a four uh because this is you just do the math right and then now again so our answer so far is three four and then you have six three digits uh with the answer being 1920 minus 1440 and so forth so that's kind of the idea and the strategy behind it uh to recap the strategy is to uh try one digit at a time in the ordering that the problem tells you to order it in and then see how many ways are there to count the rest of the digits. Uh, and in this case, we know that there's a 7 factorial, even if we 
like we don't have to count 5040 things to know that 7 factorial is um uh 7 for fact that given seven numbers that it takes 50 40 you know you could do that with a folder with seven right uh anyway so that said um so that's the strategy that i'm going to use uh and it's a little bit more error prone i would also say that uh given the constraints of this problem uh which is nine the only nine digits nine factorial is actually only uh was it like 30 something yeah uh 362,000 um, and that's actually fast enough to do a brute force recursion thing but I wanted to uh, for this problem for me I want to practice how to do this technique because that is a technique that comes up a lot uh, and it, well, often enough and if you don't know how to do it then you know and this is a good problem to practice that on because it is so easy to understand relatively uh, as as combinatorial go problem goes this is easy to understand how to um how to do these counting so let's let's get started um okay so um so let's just first by uh pre the factorial function uh and then just for x in range of from what is it two to nine uh, fact dot append x times fact uh, the last element of factorial um, and then that should give us the factorial of um, eh, maybe I should start at zero just for uh, just so that I don't have to do a minus one somewhere um, okay and then now um, we can do what we said which is that okay let's try um let's try the recursion so let's just call it um hmm, something funky uh get p of uh n and k so i guess we could uh, yeah in theory we could probably if we want to be smart about it we could just do a way to do this but but it's fine um to kind of just uh use a helper function instead uh and now we have an answer that's just the answer in general actually i don't even think we need that i think we just this is all we need to go return get p of uh n and k we, so i guess we don't actually do that much but that's fine um okay so now as we said uh we set the answer away or the return away to nothing um we first try to get one digit at a time so now we do a for x in range from inclusive 1 to n uh yeah right yeah so and in python you have to add a plus one for the inclusive uh because it's exclusive otherwise um okay so then okay um hmm so let's just do a one in count type uh one in sum so yeah let's just do count as you go zero uh count plus you go to in this case it's easier and you could have if you really wanted to you could do some fancy math to do this but but now as we said so given that we have n numbers we we put the first number as x so that means that there are n minus one so we want n minus one factorial and then now we check that hmm is this the clean way to do it yeah okay so if count is greater than maybe equal to k i have to double check the zero ness um so okay so this, so actually this is one indexed so we might be off by one somewhere but um yeah i have to double check that later <laughs> but yeah uh but if this is greater than k then we then we know that the first digit is x so answer so let's just say append x and then we get we get the um we get a permutation by recursion uh 
also, and then we return answer afterwards. And in theory, this will always uh, return, so we don't need an exit. Though if it doesn't, then in theory, we should do an assertion and then just like crash or something. Uh, but And then now we do a get p of n minus 1, as we said, and then k minus some uh, number. And then now, because count is over there, we subtract this again. And so that this is the last number before the current number. Maybe I could have written that in a more understandable way. But then now it's just k minus count. And then that's pretty much it. Uh, I think the, the only other thing is um, the base case. Uh, oh, no, I have to combine these results. Um, but let's just do the base case. If n is equal to 1, then we turn just, you know, one element of this. Um, I think this should always happen. We'll play around with it. It's been a little while. Um, okay. So then now let's just do a temporary return variable is equal to where we get back. And then we do a for for number in in R. And then if the number is greater than X or greater than or equal to X, then a, X is append by number plus one. Uh, else just append the number and the reason we did do this is basically the idea is that when we call this recursive number uh, function it will give us a number that's between 1 to n um, but what we actually want is a number that's between 1 to n but then minus this number so if we add a plus 1 to all the numbers after that then you get that number um, okay so let's just run it real quick uh, I'm not that confident about this quite yet but that's you know Oh, actually, it, will, uh, it may be off by one, but uh, because I, I like doing things with zero index, so yeah, uh, let's do four nine. And I know that it is not actually in the right format, but that's okay. Uh, th I mean, that part is easy. Okay, complaining about it though. Okay, so actually, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's try some really more basic cases. Uh, yeah. Two one two two. I guess that's it. Three one three two. Oops. Two three three. Uh, three four. And then I don't know, just some big number nine. Mm, I guess that's actually a rather number. Uh, hmm. so I guess I still should convert it back. But it looks everything looks good. So. Uh, though I am confident, except for that obviously the answer is not in the right format. So let's convert this back to a string. I wasn't paying attention, that's, a, that's my bad. Um, yeah. Uh, string of x for number. Oops. Uh, oh, because you return a string here. So then now this is. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, that looks okay, except for this one case, because we don't do the base case. Okay. Good thing we test for it. <laughs> uh, okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm relatively confident. So yeah, let's just submit then. Cool. Uh, yeah. So what is the what is the running time of this, right? Well, it's going to be um, it's going to be o of n times the number of digits. Uh, where this is n. And we, we can get pedantic about n being the input size and stuff like that, but just to keep it less confusing, uh, but it is going to be n square because we have a for loop and for each of these n, uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, and, we can, and you can actually do it with while loop if you really uh, uh, pay attention to it. 
but because we just do it one um one digit at a time and there's n digits and for each of those 10 digits we try at most all the 10 digits so it's like n choose two or n square uh so this is an n uh, uh, uh sorry n is the number of digits uh and it, so it's up to nine so it's going to be less than 100 so th this is a very fast algorithm um in terms of uh space complexity we don't really store i mean we do stuff on the stack but uh and you can also say that the way that i did it uh we create a lot of string <laughs> components uh but roughly speaking it's going to be all of uh n or all of the number of digits uh because that's the size of the output uh you could be a little bit cleverer so that you don't do the things that i did uh but but that's kind of the idea um yeah uh I would say if the brute force method, uh, I would definitely recommend it for interviews because uh, that's just nine factorial and it's really quick. It is really basic uh, understanding of recursion and backtracking and stuff like that and just keeping track. Uh, but the other way of doing it is also something that comes up a lot in competitive programming. So definitely practice it play around with it. Uh, this is a great, great problem to practice it because this is really easy to uh, do this thing because this is factorial n minus one, which we have it here. Um, in more complicated problems, uh, that's not going to be the case. It's going to be a little bit complicated to have this uh, function. Uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to calculate and it depends on the input as well. So it's, in this case, it's always factorial of n minus one, but it may be some function that you have to call another function to kind of get. Uh, and it may be more complicated than that. And it may vary where each each digit may have different uh, number, right? So because here it's always factorial of n minus one again, but it could be that one has, you know, 10 numbers and the digit two has like 20 numbers after it or something like that, right? Uh, po possibility based on the constraints. So anyway, my, my point is that this is a great problem to practice that, uh, this technique, even though you can do a proof force. So definitely play around with it. Um, yeah, this is, uh, that's all I have for this problem. Let me know what you think and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and join me on Discord and I will see y'all later. Bye-bye.